welcome to everybody. Thanks to be here with us this afternoon. Hey Dan, you know, I'm Giuseppe Bettoni. I'm the CEO and founder of Class, this platform that is trying to activate, you know, with the values of responsibility, the whole supply chain, materials, marketing, and also communication. And really pleased to be here uh, with Limine, for Linea Pelle and with Limina Pelle to deliver you know, this mission about uh, responsible innovation. The talk of this afternoon, we start really to try to understand the, how many different expressions we have about responsible innovation. First of all, what is it? You know, you can get uh, innovative because we are living in this century. We need the beautiful things because we are in fashion. We need performing things. But today, be contemporary means also not to be not to impact on people, not to impact on the environment, and to respect whatever is around us. And that is our challenge. And today, I'm really pleased to be here with people that uh, has not just choose, uh, but they are already delivering responsible innovation. And I'm really smiling because, believe me, it's not easy to be responsible and innovative at the same time and deliver all beautiful things, uh, because that's the challenge. Nobody will never look at us if we do responsible things, but not performing or not beautiful. So everything together, no compromise. So let's start with uh, Dan Whitmeyer, CEO and founder of Bolt Fred. Dan uh, has carefully tended Bolt's growth since 2009. You know, responsibility does not have, uh, it's not quick. <laughs> it's not something that you can do immediately. Using his passion and passion and expertise are two of the objectives that you will hear a lot this afternoon to lead the company through technology development, expansion, and financing. He earned a PhD in chemistry and chemical biology in San Francisco, where he graduated and uh, you know, he was involved in designing genetic circuits to control microbial organelles. So then, uh, welcome, first of all, thanks to be here. I know it's very early for you, <laughs> so I saw a coffee and I would like to share with uh, all our guests today. Uh, first question, what is responsible innovation for both Freds and for you? Well, thank you for having me, and uh, I'll just throw out that I don't think there's ever a wrong time for coffee. Uh, just going to live by that. Um, so, uh, Bolt, um, it's, a, it's a big question, and I think it goes to the core of why we started this company. Um, I Maybe it's an overly idealistic belief, but I think climate change and living within planetary boundaries is going to be the great challenge for humanity until we solve it or mitigate it. We could solve the root cause, we could mitigate it and find a way to live with it. But one way or another, it's going to continue to challenge us until we get there. And, and that was the, the, the reason for starting this company, to be one of the people trying to be part of the solution rather than simply part of the problem or complain about the problem. And so for us, we see this as a place to do innovation in an industry that I think you put so well requires um, not just uh, performance and beauty, but is going to add this new element that is sustainability for something that we all want to live with. I mean, this is a, this is an industry that really thrives as a form of art. And uh, I would hate to see all the beautiful things in the world disappear as a consequence of adapting to climate change. And so we saw an opportunity here to be part of the, part of the, the, of the solution. And the, the thesis there is there are many things we can do. Some we can do right away we can use our use our, our 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 clothing our footwear our accessories longer right some things maybe we can make subtle tweaks to how we make materials but really at the core it goes to the, the transformative innovation of the 20th century was phenomenal yet misplaced for the long term and that's petroleum we can't make things out of oil forever and so we started bolt with the idea that over the next 50 years that has to change um, and we've come at that from multiple angles, multiple products, and I'd be happy to talk about that if we kind of get into it with the panel. But, um, but, but therein lies the place where we saw um, purpose meet profit for a new type of business to exist based on new technology. Uh, I really serve an industry that, you know, for, for all of its forward leaning um, history, I don't see as much innovation coming out of this industry as maybe I would expect. I'll stop there because we're going to get attacked by little kids here while I'm on video. <laughs> well, I think sometimes it's a question not just about doing the innovation, but also be able to communicate and inform people. And that is another challenge that we have been facing. 
But let's go into, because Boltred has been launching many kind of innovation that are also responsible. But for sure, you know, recently, everybody is talking about Milo. Can you take us through, you know, this reality, what it is, why, where you're going, which are the next steps? Because we know it's not something that is going to, you know, uh, happen in one moment, but uh, you have been investing a lot, and, you know, finance is another of the argument that we will be talking about later in another panel. Can you take us through it? Yeah, of course. So, so at Bolt, the core thesis around materials for this industry was that there is a lack of a supply chain player who can provide, you know, the overwhelming environmental impact of the product, the, the materials that go into it. Something, I've seen a bunch of numbers thrown around, but everything hones in around 70% of the environmental impact is driven by raw material choice. So at Bolt, we think that what this industry needs is a supplier who can provide materials that are of the quality you need, the quantity you need, the price you need, while also being vastly better on the sustainability front. When we think about sustainability, we really think about that with four key pillars at Bolt. Carbon, somewhat obvious, climate change, greenhouse gases. Water usage, also pretty obvious. Humans, living things, we all need water. Also, uh, chemistry, I have a PhD in chemistry. Myself, uh, it's pretty easy to, to just eyes glaze over. Uh, and uh, But it, we think it's absolutely vital and we think Bolt has an industry leading chemistry program that most of it is invisible to the, to the other side except for our, our direct brand customers. And then what happens at the end of life with a product? And Milo was designed as a technology to be one of many materials we make, but one that we were getting asked a lot about. We had a lot of brands who were trying to make beautiful product out of leather, but really had a challenge with either the sustainability the ethics around using animals or the, um, the, you know, the alternative being largely plastic. And so uh, Milo as a product is this soft, supple, beautiful material that's made from mycelium as the primary component. There's of course other parts that go into it to make it uh, uh, meet all the needs and actually helps it in all those four pillars of sustainability as well. Mycelium are this root structure that is uh, underneath the ground when you find mushrooms and we use these fine, thin branched fibrils that are mycelium to make sheets that then we go through process and finish into Milo. So we grow it in under two weeks off of a certified organic waste sawdust from things like furniture factories or sawmills, um, and then use that to grow the, the overwhelming component of Milo. And so that's something that's starting to show up in the industry today. You see some great partnerships that we've announced uh, and started to tease out product with uh, Adidas, Lululemon, Stella McCartney, uh, Caring. Um, we're adding others behind that. Uh, and you're gonna start to see product flow out into the market. But at the core, uh, you know, the great challenge with this piece of innovation is it takes real time to take it to real scale. Uh, I think we just had an article, I can say it, we had an article come out a couple of weeks ago where we're standing up a facility that can produce uh, a more than a million square feet a year of Milo, which all sounds great and I'm thrilled about that, except for the fact that the industry as a whole goes through about 35 billion square feet of leather per year. So um, all in, uh, we think a lot of the future is going to be for Milo more scale to our existing customers and being able to bring exciting new customers on board because at the core, we want to be able to serve anybody who wants to be a part of the solution for a sustainable future. Yeah, thanks, Dan. I think it's important to do things, but also I think uh, it's not about customer, it's about partners today. So you need to have your network that is aligned with your thinking with, or way you're operating or the, you know, the new way to do business is not going to be there. So we have been excited to see the consortium because uh, that's, it's a really commitment also from the base. We would like to see also these uh, new products and to try them because they look gorgeous, by the way. And mm -hmm. we know that we choose with the eyes, first of all. And then when we know the story, voila. Les jeux sont faits, someone says in Paris. <laughs> we are very excited for, for people out there to be touching and feeling those products. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a real tribute, not just to the innovation that the smart and dedicated scientists and engineers at Bolt have put into work and the product people, but also the, you, you say it very well, these great partners who are along with us on the journey, who see the need to change and are willing to lean into innovation with us. Uh, and you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're the artisans who make the beautiful, make, make it beautiful. You know, yeah. I see things that go out the door that look to me like sheets 
uh, and rolls of Milo. What comes back are pictures and prototypes and final products, beautiful, beautiful product. And, and I think the world's going to love it when they get a chance So then to we will keep in touch to see the next steps, huh? Yes. <laughs> keep keep uh, committed and then we will be back. So thanks then. We will move uh, to our second uh, partners. Let's see if I'm able to use. Yes, I did it. <laughs> so Celestino Panzeri from Limonte. Celestino General Manager, Division Accessories. You know, you are, uh, you know, textile designers. Yep. Right? So, really interesting matter. And um, Limonta, we are hearing a lot of, about responsible innovation materials, but we have to think, you know, inside the supply chain. If you do materials, you need also partners that, tr that are able to transform it, edit, adding value, you know, to it, in order to get then down also to the consumer, you know, without this step. Very difficult. You can do maybe, but slowly and maybe not with the right thing. So can you share with us, Celestino, what is responsible innovation for Limonta? All right. I try to be uh, as simple as possible. In my opinion, you, uh, you say the correct way. Uh, today, responsible innovation is to make sure, make sure that you have uh, all the necessary resources, knowledge to identify the target. That's the most important thing. I mean, identify the target of the market where you want to address your innovation. You have to know precisely what you want to do and for whom you want to make. This is my opinion is uh, extremely important to define responsible innovation because it is the deep study and uh, a culture of being uh, able to intimately understand what you want to do before doing it. Well, planning, you Correct. know, a lot of people is talking about eco-design. Why? Because, uh, you know, the designer part and designer 360 degrees is someone that needs to know which is, uh, you know, the impact that the decision to take in one material, the other material, one machine or the other machine on the environment and on the human being. So. Correct. You, you need uh, to prepare. I mean, uh, to be responsible is important to have full control of the process of how you make the things. Uh, not only uh, what you have done and uh, showing uh, something because it's coming from nowhere with, that you don't have the control where the raw material comes uh, or whatever. So a huge and a deep uh, uh, investment in time uh, and in uh, expertise, expertise, I would say, yeah. so that Absolutely. is uh, extremely important. It, that is a new language in our era eh? because uh, uh, later on probably I, I would like to explain a case that we uh, uh, experienced that very interesting where innovation sometimes is available either in nature or from past experience it's just a question to go and found and, uh, and adapt uh, to the today's time. And today's time are different than what it was uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Absolutely. And this led to me, you know, now we are really curious to hear case histories. Uh, the case history, it was like uh, once we started and stimulated by uh, the detox program started in 2010, mm -hmm. Of course, this was a, a, an unbelievable push up uh, to uh, all uh, the, the, the mind of the industries to try to find solution for all the, not only textile, but fashion industries, uh, as the challenge was very, very high. I mean, to uh, remove uh, from the supply chain certainly substances that we was used to normally use, more or less which was considered dangerous. This started uh, uh, pushing, well, showing the problem, started in a way, basically Italian makes, uh, watching its solution, searching disparately solution. And searching on that, of course, we started in uh, evaluating the easiest, the fastest. And uh, the easiest and fastest was to um, consider recycled process, recycled material, as uh, 
uh, the first step. In researching that, uh, we discovered an invention made in the year 50, which is the PA-11. PA-11 is a, a polyamide, nylon, 100% vegetable derivative from castor oil, which is available as a plant that is growing in a row field. It was an invention that at the time was invented, so into the year 50, haven't been successful because it was too expensive. It was, the raw material was four times the regular oil uh, uh, cost of uh, raw material. Well, you imagine the guys that probably made it bankrupt, the guy that invested, invented uh, this innovation uh, didn't have uh, at all successful. Today is the answer to everything and is existing since 70 years. It's just a question to re retake, reformulate, readjust uh, into a new channel of production. Uh, that's it, to revamp it, but it's something the beauty of these things is that uh, sometimes we think that innovation is something that we have to search in the future. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> the past is learning, is teaching us. Well, for people that has knowledge, you know, we are not talking about doing, uh, we are talking about the knowledge. culture of doing. Uh, Correct. That is something completely different. What I say, the responsible innovation means first to have the knowledge of the target you want to achieve. Yeah. And can you take us through simply the last bit about, uh, you know, something that you have done and it's, you know, in cooperation because we know that you are working in partnership. We, 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 this, this is another point. I mean, the, we, the, uh, the company uh, Limonta, that is uh, uh, one of the highlights of Limonta is the longevity. We have uh, been established, this company has been established in 1893, over 120 years ago. And uh, of course, in the time being, uh, we became, we, we, we realized we became a brand in a way, uh, with all the respect to the luxury brand uh, that are our uh, uh, premium customers. But uh, we are a brand, and we are today considered no longer as a supplier, but we are considered as a partner, as a consultant, because this is what is the big change. Uh, people need. Uh, to feel in a trust with their supplier. And to feel in a trust, of course, the age, generally, is synonymous of trust, uh, but not, not, not necessary, I know that. But uh, uh, the continuity, the philosophy of the company, uh, which is seriousness, the pillars of the company, is to approach any demand, any question that we receive in a very serious way and have a capacity to make a deep analysis of what the customer is looking from, from us. And it, what he expect it is to support something that is reliable. Reliable means we have to put our name on it. So the knowledge and the decision in the case that you probably are uh, uh, looking for we have uh, made it a very nice partnership with uh, one of our suppliers that is Aquafil uh, producing recycled nylon within the last 10 years probably we evaluated hundreds of opportunities Absolutely. hundreds that was uh, came to our door approached our door in uh, uh, asking us to uh, to source from them. We selected, it took years to select. Why? Because we have to put our name on this choice. So uh, it was a very hard journey, but at the end, uh, 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 the success we have uh, meted uh, with this operation, I think, uh, made uh, both happy, I mean, <laughs> Aquafil and Limont as well, for the great success we have from 2018, uh, when we started, we, thought we was producing a few thousand meters. Today, we are almost close to two million meters in a very short yeah. time. And added value. And that is the reason why. And I invite you all to come you know, to the space of uh, another point of materials to discover <coughs> the Econil made by Limonta, where we are not, and in this space, we are not just showing fabric we are showing you know the commitment 
of the company that is making the fabric together with the commitment of the company that is making the yarn, you know, and the outcome that is beautiful, that is performing, but it's born from competence of at least, uh, you know, two correct. important steps. Correct. That's perfectly correct. So thank you, Celestino. My pleasure. And uh, let's go to the next. Sorry, I didn't introduce the fact that uh, we will have 10 minutes at the end for all the questions. So, so we are not just talking, but we would like to have uh, your question all at the end. So, Leonardo. Hello. <laughs> so, um, Leonardo Cappelletti, Commercial Director, Footwear and Leather Goods, Gruppo Mastrotto. Uh, senior executive with expertise, I told you that expertise and uh, passion was coming uh, all the time, in the sport and fashion, footwear and apparel industries. Uh, strong experience in developing ingredient brands, and here we are, and in the B2B environment. So international experience, leading business in growth and setting organizing organization worldwide. Born in Italy and lived in London, Hong Kong, uh, and somewhere in Tokyo and Munich. So international, interactive, you know, um, that's what we need today to be part of the world, basically, and to be able to go. So, Leonardo, can you introduce a little bit the Gruppo Mastrotto and what is Responsible Innovation for you? As you have seen, this is the moment to, you know, first okay. to dedicate to this, because as we have heard, there are so many differences, even if the goal is the same, to change the way to do business. Okay, so first of all, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction, very precise. Um, yeah, Gruppo Mastrotto is uh, one of the leading uh, tanneries in the world. So we produce leather, different kinds of leathers, and we supply different kinds of customers worldwide for different categories. So it's not just footwear, footwear and bags or uh, leather goods, we are also doing uh, automotive and alpestry. Um, Gruppo Mastrotto uh, has a strategy, obviously. I like what uh, uh, Celestino said before. So it's important to know what you want to achieve. And this is what we also put in place in the past years. I think that for us, uh, 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 responsible innovation is not just the product, it's a system, it's a process which embraces uh, all the functions. So what I mean is that uh, um, innovation has to be, or has to start, in my opinion, from uh, the way you do your job, the, the processes you have in your uh, supply chain, value chain, and uh, this is what we have started as a group a few years ago. Uh, again, we are talking about uh, processes, it means that we attach, uh, uh, we are touching uh, uh, sales, for example, my specific area, marketing also, but not only production, how to improve how to implement projects that can really make uh, your processes a better system also for the world because the output, the final output, it will have a sustainable product. So with a lower impact, you can provide to the finished product. So that's for us the system, that's the philosophy. This is part of the strategy. It's a journey because it started, at, it's something that started some years ago, but we continue every day to look at the different uh, solutions, different uh, opportunities to improve ourselves and the world overall. And thank you. Can you share with us some, you know, some examples of the strategy, you know, and how to get there, which are the, you know, let's say challenges, you know, and opportunities. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well. No, no, uh, it's a good question. I think that uh, very tangible examples of what we have done so far. Uh, first of all, uh, recently, uh, Gruppo Mastrotto, uh, is uh, certified by the uh, United States Department of Agriculture. So we are recognized as a bio-based leather. We are lucky because leather is genuine. Lucky for us, we are part of the recycling or circular economy. So leather is really genuine. Obviously, then you have to finish the leather during the tannery, sorry, the tannery production. And then you have to put some chemicals. But thanks to our system, we are, mm, I would say, for most of the products, 90% uh, bio uh, bio-based, which is a very good achievement. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, for example, from the 2021, so this year, 100% of the power that we purchase for our uh, plants is coming from renewable sources. The this covers 80% of the total power we use for the plants. We have 13 plants in Italy, for example. 
and the 20% that remaining is co-generated by us. So we use our uh, plants our own, to, exactly, we, we, we do by our own. So I would say it was a very big step forward to be even more sustainable if you want. Even because, you know, the energy today is a pretty hot topic, uh, we know. Absolutely. Okay. Um, from the processes, I can tell you that, for example, in the last 12 months, uh, the, the, the company introduced new profiles, expertise, uh, from uh, safety and environment, from HR, because also uh, innovation uh, is also how to work with your uh, partners, your associates in the company. So it's important also to create the right environment for everybody. And so this was one of the big steps that we have done to in increase, if you want, a kind of culture oriented to be sustainable also in the relationship between the workers, between the, the colleagues that also reflects outside in terms of ethical conduct. So we have plenty of examples if you want, but I would say that uh, uh, this is a process, touch different functions because the final outcome is also to produce uh, in the right way to have a less impact on the environment. So we can say that um, responsibility, sustainability is part of the business strategy at this point. It's not it's a dead add-on. No, I would say that then you have to connect the dots. This is something that is very common to others. Like you said many times, so the complexity. For me, the most important part is really to find a way to have our own clear strategy and goals, but also to find a way to integrate the supply chain in this project because we can do the, the best of things, but if we don't have something downstream or upstream thinking the same way, then it's a, a story. But yeah, this it's is not just a greenwashing. We, we keep saying Perfect. that. Exactly. Or you integrate responsibility in what you do, the design, the innovation, you know, the production, and that's why we keep saying that responsibility, sustainability starts with a company, cannot be just a product. Because if the company does not have this in mind and integrate in all the different steps of the production, you know, Hello, the story making and the storytelling yes. needs to align. Or if you have just the storytelling. It's got it. That's the reason why I say that it's important to integrate the suppliers with the yeah. same mentality and also to find the right customers, understanding. Yeah. the differences that you are bringing because if not uh, you can yeah. offer the best uh, solution but if, yeah. you, if they don't buy in uh, yeah. you lose the time and that's why you know everybody from then to Celestino till now I'm not sure Stefano later as well we are talking about to understand where we want to go if you do not know to whom you are talking to <laughs> Maybe it's just uh, a waste of time, you know, and... Uh, uh, I think that uh, is a quite uh, uh, interesting how we are pretty aligned. Now I will wait for Stefano, but I, I'm sure that it's the same, <laughs> on the same page, because uh, at the end of the day, it's not more the relationship between supplier and customer, is more partnership. If you don't do that, I would say that uh, you cannot survive. Uh, you know, I cannot agree more, because as class we have seen, you know, in market research, just after... I, I would like to say after COVID, but it's, we are still during COVID, but at least out from the first year. They asked the consumer which are the most important value, and among the first three, we have the, fir the first one is justice, because you were talking about people, you know, and ethical, and not just the people we're working with, but the people that are working to get our, you know, our materials, our uh, supply. You know, the second one is health, uh, because people need to be reassured that what we're wearing is good. So you were talking about the bio-based, uh, you know, yeah. and the expertise to do things uh, and the detox, uh, I think, are all going into. And then the third part is really partnership. Absolutely, it is. Partnership is not anymore the time. You know, the customers are the ones that are looking to make something at a good price, uh, at a good volume. That is not part of the conversation that we are having here and not in Europe, I believe, in order to be also competitive. Okay, thank you very much, Leonardo. You're and uh, let's go to Mogu, Stefano Babbini, CEO of uh, this uh, young, but really, <laughs> well, you are representing one of the new generation of production, I think. I'm, I'm putting a lot of pressure. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> well, I think it's your everyday life, uh, I suspect it. So, environmental engineer, so, business developer, entrepreneur, active in the clean tech and bioeconomy sector since 2005. So, you can see all, always from the profile that you have to know many things <laughs> in order to start uh, a conversation. 
So he contributed to the startup of several initiatives worldwide with a special focus on the agro industry, renewable energies and biotech. So home in uh, hometown in Tuscany, very inspirative, I think. <laughs> moved to Florence and uh, graduating in environmental engineer. And um, you know, you moved to Milan in 2010, uh, getting involved in the biomass to energy business. So we're coming get very close to the subject, I think. Uh, so that brought him uh, in several countries, Asia, Africa, and South America. Sorry if I read this kind of bio, but it's so important to understand where you are coming from in order to get <laughs> where they are. Sorry, and I forgot. You know, I should be multitask, but sometimes it's not like that. So that's Stefano Babbini. And he has been entrepreneur and manager during the last 12 years. So Stefano, can you share with us uh, what is responsible innovation for you with this you know, tour that we have done? And uh, Mogu, what is Mogu? Who is Mogu? Okay. Thanks for the kind invitation, the opportunity of showing uh, the here the, our path and also our results. Um, first of all, Mogu is a biotech company. Uh, we collaborate with the nature. So it's a really nature co-design in order to create and deliver uh, natural materials for different market segments. But we have a, a, a specialization in interior design products, which has been our first vertical, the first industry that uh, at that time in 2015 we targeted. And uh, today we are developing a new generation of materials that are flexible materials based on mycelium, so fungi roots. Um, through fermentation process. So what we do every day, basically, is uh, fungal fermentation. We use uh, different uh, uh, feedstock. Uh, so um, our approach has been, since the beginning, the, the, the circular economy, completely. So we have been scouting different uh, uh, feedstock coming from different industries, like textile uh, uh, industry or agro industry, the food industry. And uh, collecting those materials, uh, we prepared uh, in the time uh, our recipes uh, in order to create something consistent that could be spent in specific application, always in collaboration, again, with uh, some partners and uh, stakeholders. So um, we are in the biotech, we are in the, uh, the sustainability uh, segment, let's say, if we can say. Um, and in reality, I could uh, answer already like this uh, when you ask me what is uh, a responsible innovation because uh, it's already enough, maybe, but it's not. Uh, because today, uh, being a representative of uh, the, the, uh, the bi biotech industry somehow and also innovation and uh, reading what is uh, coming, out, coming out a daily basis in the social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and so on, Honestly, in Mogu, we really feel uh, a lot of uh, pressure and uh, responsibility because uh, uh, what we see is uh, sometimes uh, we understand that could be misleading uh, in order to evaluate what uh, our job is a reality. We have, a, a, I would say, a special way to um, approach uh, innovation and special projects because we don't communicate that much. If you look at uh, what we communicate, uh, usually, it's mostly related to products. It's not related to innovation 100%. We are not talking about what could be in future. You are not seeing our flexible material, which is not leather at all. At all, it's a flexible material in uh, our social campaigns. Because you will see products, what we can deliver to you, what you can buy. And uh, I believe that uh, the innovation, responsible innovation today, is, has a lot to do with this, with communication, and not, not with miscommunication or even greenwashing. To deliver something that can be used by the industry, the customers, and so on. So be, if, for us, it's very important to be responsible, not only with the environment, so sustainability. This is the starting point. Without this, Mogu wouldn't exist, basically. But be responsible is uh, to be responsible with the industry, because you work with the industry, and we collaborate with the tanneries. So we are exactly where we have to be today, because we are exactly in the industry. We collaborate with them. 
and being responsible with the audience, with the people, because they have to understand what is leather, what is not, what is sustainable, what is not, what is plastic and what is not. If a product can, can be comparable with leather or with plastic. This is a responsibility for, for us, Imogu. Absolutely, and this is completely aligned with an, you know, a new point of materials that is not here to say this is the best one, but it's here to tell you what is behind you know, this product, this company, because I go back to the fact that before the product we have the company. But you know, on another side, I think Mogu is the only Italian biotech company that is delivering uh, you know, this mushroom, let me call it mushroom because that's, you know, the communication is around that and we know Stefano that a lot of the communication is done because a lot of these, uh, you know, startup companies are looking for funds and they need to pump up a little bit. But I, I heard that you are already achieving something interesting. So can you share with us where you are, different application? You know, we know that it's a, an ongoing process. Each one of us has an ongoing process or we wouldn't be here today. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, again, the, if you can buy a mycelium material, which is a product today worldwide, not in Italy, you come to Mogu because you won't find any where else, most probably. Not with the price list, with the certification, with the characteristics and so on. Not ready for the fashion industry. I'm talking about the design and the interior design. Those are our products today. You can look and you can receive the catalog. They are in the website. You can find samples over there. So this is not a problem. Um, regarding what we are cooking, almost literally, in, uh, in our kitchen, uh, nowadays uh, it's not a secret that we are developing a new generation of material. I was already mentioning. Uh, we have, for this, we have collaborations with uh, some few tanneries. Uh, we have collaboration in order to transform the material because uh, as soon as you uh, are good in uh, fungal fermentation, this is not enough. It's not a material. The same way if you are good in, uh, in growing a cow, we don't have leather. Simply, you cannot use it for a bag. The, the, you are half way, most probably, and this is exactly where we are right now, but collaborations are going well. Uh, we have credibility and we are quite glad for this. So uh, we collaborate also with brands. This is all something I can say, not specifying exactly what kind of brands. Uh, but um, the target is uh, really the fashion industry, but not only, also because we are in the interior market, so it's quite easy to understand that we could valorize our materials also in other uh, directions. But again, the, the, our target is to bring it to the people. It could be a small scale in the beginning, Yes, but we have to be in the market. And uh, as soon as we will be ready, you will see it. And you, you will be in the position to purchase something that is uh, credible, tangible, real, and of course affordable because innovation at crazy price is not really a sustainable innovation. So last but not least, can you tell us the performances of the material? Why Mogu and not another one? Well, first of all, uh, we, uh, we are radical by nature, so we don't compromise that much with plastic, to be honest with you. So uh, it's quite normal that today uh, the state of art of the performance is not uh, achieving, uh, for example, the one of the leather. But again, it's a different material. You cannot compare it. And uh, we are glad to offer something different with different characteristics. Of course, it's a reference. So the, the, we have a target and we are approaching the, the, the technical specs of, uh, of leather products. It takes time, but the other point is to bring it to scale, because then production and industrialization is also a challenging part of our job. Absolutely. And again, you cannot do it alone. Sure. We heard then about talking about scaling. That is one of the key things that we need to reach. I think we are talking the same language. So I would like to ask many other things, but I think we come to the moment where it's opening up to the audience. If you have some question for our speakers, or I will proceed, but you know, more than happy to have your questions. We have been too good, I think. <laughs> Well, I will proceed with uh, one question for each one of you then. Um, can you maybe take us through a little bit about how much time we will have, uh, in your opinion, before we can see something and we can buy something out of Milo? 
uh, I think it'll be much faster than anyone's expecting. Um, sorry for the yes. vague answer, but sh but succinct. Um, you know, uh, I think you saw it from all these brilliant panelists, right? This is a this is a challenge that everyone's trying to do with responsible innovation, pull towards a common goal. And if you ever zoom out and look at the scope of the problem we're all trying to solve for the planet, we need everybody doing it. And so uh, I think what you're going to find is everybody's going to be bringing unique technologies and products to market and just scale, scale, scale. We've got to get to scale if we're going to make a real big dent in the problem. And for Milo, we see that uh, getting in the hands of consumers, obviously not at the massive scale we dream of it in the future, in the beginning, but everything's about building on what we do. And so we'll have stuff out there soon. And we are going to, as I said earlier, we're standing up what we think of as a lot of capacity that's still tiny. <laughs> the okay. Overall scheme of things. <laughs> Thanks. So this is the next challenge. Celestino, what is, is in your portfolio for the next future? Can you share with us? So let's go next. There are many. Your things. wishes. Your uh, truly many, many things. Uh, <laughs> Just but one. I, <laughs> but uh, but I, I, I would say that uh, the two big challenges uh, we are uh, recalling to reuse uh, and reduce. Reuse, it means uh, uh, try to use, uh, uh, to, to throw away less material. So all the scratches, all the uh, production, the industry produce huge amount of garbage. Absolutely. And one of the big dream we have and on which we are really investing a lot of money is to try to reduce as much as possible our garbage. Uh, to do this, uh, of course, we are uh, investing a amount of money to uh, make sure the process of production, the uh, lot of production can be adapted to today's need of the customer, shortening as much as possible and uh, as well to find a way to uh, upcycle the, any, any, any scrap. Create more value. Uh, uh, yeah. to, to give uh, another life uh, to something uh, instead to put in the garbage. This is one point. And the second point is true, is reduce the fuel dependency, the fossil dependency. We are in, in textile industries. We have a variety, uh, a, a huge variety of opportunities. Uh, uh, but we, we're still depending a lot of, uh, from uh, a fossil. And uh, one of the main targets is to reduce using biosource. I mean, uh, bio-based material uh, uh, based on renewable products are important, like recycling. Uh, it means use less natural uh, uh, fossil or uh, product that will uh, end soon, one day or the other. Limited resources. Limited yeah. resources. And to use the limited resources for the really priority use, Correct. maybe. Correct. Thank you, Celestino. Leonardo, yeah. what's next? What's next? <laughs> what's next? <laughs> well, what's next? It's a very good question. So I think that, as uh, I said before, I tried to say before, we have already started doing a lot of things in order to reduce the carbon in footprint. Your, in, in your wish list, you know, something ah, a little a wish bit. list, I would say, more than a wish list because we are already working on something like that. So, first of all, uh, we have uh, launched our collection from, uh, 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 um, sorry, uh, green leather, organic leather. Uh, okay. We have increased the uh, portfolio for the chrome-free and metal-free. I would say it's not a big innovation, but it's something very important Concrete. for, for, for yeah. the for the industry. So we are part of this game too. And uh, uh, wish list. Uh, there are some projects very interesting that we are working on uh, with some other companies or so partnership to see if we can uh, uh, find a way to have a very good product in terms of performance. Uh, let's say using or reusing the production left leftovers. So Great. a kind of recycling, so to say. But I would say it's a, it's a project. Uh, it yeah. will take some time, but uh, we are looking for different options, well, different things, solutions. You know, important things take time, but uh, we have a good vision and a strategy. No, no, I would say, yeah, for I us, we have, a very, we have a road plan. Uh, it depends, because as I said before, it's important to integrate all the supply chain. Absolutely. So we have the idea. We have some partners today that are working with us, together with us. Uh, we try to really develop the next generation of leather, cannot replace everything, but can be a niche for specific products. 
that's how we start the innovation step by exactly. step and checking and testing checking, and uh, testing uh, working together sure. and but it's interesting that you're talking about upcycling so yes. to give more value to something that in the past was just a garbage exactly. so it's really great absolutely stefano next steps <laughs> that is interesting <laughs> as well <laughs> because you are in the future already <laughs> he's already the future we try to be fun. but i know i'm sure that you have something well uh, we have to grow 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 a lot um, simply because uh, the industry that we are targeting is not small uh, we cannot just keep uh, our small shoulders and uh, pretend to be something uh, in uh, uh, prom a promise for the future. This is something we really don't like completely. And uh, that's why, uh, uh, again, I like the fact that we are also the present because we are in the market in, uh, for other products. Um, at this very moment, the, 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 what is very important is uh, to achieve a proof of concept that is uh, consistent that can satisfy our uh, uh, stakeholders, our, uh, uh, the industry that we are working with. Um, and this is the first, uh, first topic. And then the other topic, again, is uh, the company growth in terms of uh, production, because, of course, in, uh, in this market, uh, you don't exist just with a small, uh, nice uh, niche. niche, exactly. Niche. So the, the company growth is uh, today is my baby, and uh, I'm taking care. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Stefano. I think you all introduced, you know, the subject of uh, that we will have in ten, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, that is responsible finance, because all these people that are talking so simply about responsible innovation means that they have invested a lot. And without a good finance and a good investment support, uh, you know, this is going to be quite impossible. So this afternoon we are going to continue with responsible innovation from another perspective you know where we will talk about uh, what does it mean finance and responsibility so if there are no other questions i thank you you all very much thank you dan to be with us we will keep in touch so thank you thank celestino you. Thank, thank you leonardo thank you stefano thank you. and thanks to you all we have been with us and uh, see you in 10 minutes if you like to continue the conversation and our travel thanks thank you thank you, thank you. Cheers.